Hey, welcome to A Foreigner in the Philippines. Well, you've often heard me uh, prattle on about my experiences as a musician. And uh, somebody recently, as if, as if that's not enough, somebody recently suggested, why don't we do a, uh, a Keep Fit series on, well, it wouldn't be Keep Fit, it would be for us elderly people and we do see that people who are in the age bracket of 45, 55, 60 um, are the higher watching, viewing uh, portion of our membership. So there's a link between going back uh, as I am planning on doing and playing the trombone again. I used to be a fairly good trombone player. Now what I thought is, I thought, if only at one time I thought, well, maybe if I could uh, find a trombone that I could afford, um, then I would love to start playing again, just for myself, you know. And then, as soon as I thought about the trombone and how much they cost, uh, we're really talking about some serious money for a, a really nice trombone, around a thousand dollars. Which, if you think about it, a thousand dollars. What? What is it? Fifty thousand? It's fifty thousand pesos. Can I afford? <laughs> am I willing to spend fifty thousand pesos on finding a trombone? Uh, that's if I could find a trombone. I thought at that time, would I? Would I be willing to do it? And of course, no, because I can think of so many better ways of spending that money than buying a trombone. Um, even though I love the trombone and I've been trying to get away from it all my life. <laughs> Sounds like a contradiction, yeah? Uh, playing the trombone as a, as a musician and a, and a singer, um, uh, I hasten to add, uh, in case some smart aleck, some smart ass says, you didn't play them at the same time, did you? Um, no, I didn't play them at the same time. Um, <laughs> okay. So, I would like to go back and I thought that it was impossible. Uh, I couldn't imagine somebody out there uh, with, uh, with a King to uh, a King 2B which would be my favorite choice of instrument. That was what my idol JJ uh, Johnson, the great the pro possibly one of the greatest trombone players in the world. That was what he played. So unless there was somebody out there who had um, a classic uh, old 2B King uh, that he wanted to send to me. It was never going to happen. And of course, there isn't anybody out there who has a King 2B in his closet that he wants to send to me. So, to my surprise, when we went to Tagbalaran recently, uh, we walked, th we were buying crutches for our friend Dennis. Uh, and as we walked through, we walked through the music section and that was where all of the instruments were. And I noticed that they did have some brass instruments. Well, I think of, uh, of the, the trombone as being something that nobody, nobody out here will ever want to play. So it was, uh, it was almost like a dare when I said, I wonder if they have a trombone. Well, of course, Immediately, my warrior princess says, well, why don't we ask? And I'm in the boat. So I ask, almost with my heart in my mouth, um, by any chance, sir, do you, do you have any trombones? Yes, we do. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't know where to, to be uh, happy or sad. Anyway, he takes me over to a, a display case, and sure enough, there is a nice-looking trombone. Of course, it's new. And... So, as I say, I'm in the boat now. Well, well, can I have a look at it? Well, first of all, I say to Beth, I'm not, I'm not going to have a look at that because if I do, uh, they're going to expect me to actually play it. I mean, how could I buy a trombone without ever having played it? Why wouldn't you want to play it, she says. Because I haven't touched a trombone to my lips in something like six years. Why Why would I embarrass myself, and it will be embarrassing, 
by playing it in a public place. Somebody's going to be looking at the old foreigner over in the corner, farting around on the trombone and thinking, is he insane? So, I was firm. I said, no, it will sound bloody awful, so I'm not going to do it. Anyway, when, when he opened the, the case and, uh, and got the trombone out and hands it to me in two pieces, it comes together in two pieces, uh, I put it together and I tried to slide and it, it doesn't, it really doesn't feel too bad. Of course, that's not really a guarantee of any kind. And then uh, Beth said to him, how much is it? And it was only 6,000, I think, 700 pesos. Six, that's under 7,000 pesos. I said, it, it, can't, it can't be right. Where was it made? I mean, it didn't take any guessing to know that it wasn't a King 2B made in Cleveland, Ohio. He said, well, uh, it was made in China. Oh, okay. But China makes some pretty good instruments and India are also beginning to produce musical instruments. The trombone is another thing. It has to be finely made to be a really nice trombone. So, I put it together. Uh, first of all, though, coward that I am, I asked him, um, can I just buy the mouthpiece? You see, if you're going back to playing an instrument, a brass instrument, all of these muscles, there's a terrific number of muscles, 30 or something, tiny little muscles, which allow you to enunciate words with expressions and uh, different ways of uh, shaping the mouth. There's a terrific number of muscles and they all band together and they become extremely strong, extremely, uh, well, uh, extremely skilled in performing the needs of playing any brass instrument or any, any instrument that you actually put it to your mouth, a reed instrument. So, uh, no, you can't buy the, the trombone mouthpiece because uh, we only have that one and it has to go with the trombone. So, that was my escape route was quickly blocked because if I could have bought the mouthpiece and I know that the trombone is there then I could have come back uh, after having put the mouthpiece to my mouth I could have put it out there and it's a, it's kind of a little bit like this if you look at it like this look try not to cut my tongue off or my nose this would be more a, tr uh, a trumpet mouthpiece but this is what happens See, now, when you put it to your mouth like this, if you use a lot of pressure, it, it crushes the muscles and reduces the skill level. So the idea is a non-pressure system, if you can. Um, most people use the pressure system and learn to ease off a little bit later in life. But that's what, that's what you need to do. And if you can buy a mouthpiece, then you can do that without making a load of uh, noise uh, and embarrassing yourself with this hideously um, horrible noise that will come out. Uh, and you can do it and, and then you can come back and buy the trombone and you can try it out in the store and chances are the muscle memory in the hands and the arms will be fine and your mouth will not let you down, which is a big risk for me of course. Uh, so, no. So now, I've got... Did you hear that? The go dogs are spending quality time again together. So, now I've got the trombone in my hands and the mouthpiece is inserted. And Beth is saying, well, go on, play it. I said, it's going to be bloody awful. It will sound bloody awful. No, it won't, she said. So just go on and play it. Just, just play it. So... I put it to my lips and I blew. No. She said, no it won't. But I had said, it will sound bloody awful. Well, guess what? It sounded bloody awful. So, I blew a few notes that sounded as if I was um, uh, having a great deal of trouble after a, a really rough curry. Um, 
And then I put the thing down and I said, let me see, it's about 80 or 100 dollars. If it's not really that good, I can just donate it for that kind of money to the local school band. And maybe I'll throw in a few lessons for whoever takes on this instrument of torture. So we bought it. So it is my intention to let you take the road back with me. And I promise that since we got the instrument, which was well over a week ago before we left for Palawan, I have, I promise, I have not touched the instrument. I haven't secretly been practicing so that I don't embarrass myself, though why I shouldn't have taken that route out, I, I'll never know. Uh, and I thought that I would make this a metaphor for getting fit. Because what happens when you start to get older, shall we say, as I am, uh, your muscles atrophy, and that's what's happened here. These muscles have atrophied. But I know that they will return because once before I gave up playing the trombone when I moved to America and I actually didn't play the trombone for 17 years. 17 years, not 6 years. And after 17 years, uh, in some insane moment, I went out and bought a trombone. So, what did it sound? What did it sound like? Well, it sounded bloody awful. Didn't I tell you that already? But it came back. And in a fairly short time, I actually did start playing again. And after that, I joined a band, the concert band uh, on Sanibel Island in Florida. Uh, and I did enjoy uh, quite a few years of playing again. Uh, and I reached nothing like my original standard as a, a pro, but I did attain a certain standard which at least allowed me to enjoy what I was doing. Nothing worse than going back to something which you were highly skilled at, not attaining that same level of skill and um, being uh, constantly reminded of it when you play every day. So my invitation to you in these back to the trombone series is that you will come with me and find out what it's like to go back to something that you used to do quite well. Now what's the metaphor, what's the, uh, the parallel between this and getting fit? Well I am going to have to get fit again even if it's only in this area here. So at first it's going to be hard, believe me, as a way of, um, what, what can we say, uh, as a way of limiting the amount of derision which I will undoubtedly face from people who uh, like to deride, um, I'm going to play a recording of a number called Masquerade. Uh, and Masquerade I, I recorded in a professional studio uh, because I wanted to have that as a record and you can actually hear it on this channel by going uh, browsing through our, our uh, videos and find the one that is titled Masquerade and you will hear me pray when not pray although I'll be doing a little bit of that before I open this trombone case um, you'll hear me play Masquerade uh, and it's not bad but in case you didn't do that uh, and so that you are a captive audience, I will be playing that as I put this trombone together. And then, as I said, I promise that I will not have played for something like six years, not put it to my lips other than those two bloody awful notes that I played in the shop in Tybalaran. So thanks for listening. I hope that you will join me on this. And if you are a former... A musician say from high school a high school band and you're wondering if you could ever pick up the trombone or the clarinet or saxophone or even going back to drums again and attain 
any kind of standard uh, skill that would give you pleasure to be back in music, then you might want to come along with me and see what the difficulties are. And you will be hearing the difficulties as they really do present themselves. So, this is uh, part one of my Back to the Trombone series. See you again at the next one. Thanks for being with me. This is A Foreigner in the Philippines. Bye for now.